Hi, this is Manos Brilakis presenting case number 31 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is the case of a patient with multivessel coronary artery disease with multiple CTOs and left ventricular dysfunction who underwent PCI of two CTOs using hemodynamic support. This was the case of a 67-year-old gentleman who presented with stable angina, even at low levels of exertion, and he was found to have CTOs of all three vessels. However, after surgical evaluation, he was not considered to be a good candidate for bypass due to poor distal targets. He had multiple comorbidities with hypertension, heart failure, diabetes, and dyslipidemia, ejection fraction of 25%. However, all the myocardial territories were viable on MRI imaging. On coronary angiography, he does have a CTO of the mid left anterior descending artery. This is a case of what we sometimes see almost like a bifid uh, LAD with a large uh, essentially septal branch that provides multiple other septal branches that supplies the posterior descending artery and also a CTO of the main LAD as well. He also had a lesion a CTO on the circumflex with some delayed filling, and we also see the PDA and the PLV filling late via collaterals. This is the right coronary artery with an occlusion of the mid-segment. It does provide some epicardial collaterals through an acute marginal to the distal left anterior descending artery, which indeed appears to be small and diffusely diseased. There was a discussion about the sequence of revascularization attempts with PCI, whether the right coronary, the LAD of the circumflex should be performed first. The consensus was that the LAD represented probably the largest myocardial territory, and that should be the one performed first. So looking at the four characteristics we assess in every CTO, this was a case with a blunt proximal cap. The length was hard to judge on single injection, but appeared to be long about 60 millimeters, the distal vessel was poor, and the collaterals were epicardial from the right coronary artery, not particularly uh, um, suitable for retrograde approach. So the plan was to try and degrade an ADR with retrograde um, only as a last, um, um, last uh, option, given the complexity of the collateral and the small size and the tortuosity. There was also discussion about doing it with hemodynamic support, given the patient's uh, low ejection fraction, the fact that these were essentially his last uh, patent coronary vessels, it was decided to perform hemodynamic support and an impeller CP device was inserted. The left main was engaged with an 8 friends XB 3.5 guide using femoral approach, that was with the right femoral, the impeller was through the left femoral, and um, a six French radial was inserted for imaging through the right coronary artery. Dual injection does demonstrate that there is um, a fairly, um, it might not be as long as the of occlusion as we thought in terms of the LAD. However, it's diffused disease with a small distal vessel. Hence, if we went subintimal, the chance of reentry will be a little more challenging given the small caliber of the distal vessel. We advanced uh, a, a microcatheter, a fine cross with the CM blue into the first uh, septal branch. In cases like this, where there's a, a very important branch, essentially this septal supplies both the septum as well as the inferior wall. Therefore, if something were to happen into the septal during attempts to recanalize the LAD, the patient would like to become fairly unstable. So in cases like this, it is always a good idea to advance a guide wire into this branch so as to prevent compromise and if something were to happen to have a wire so it can be standed quickly to avoid hemodynamic collapse. The fine cross microcatheter was then advanced into the proximal cap and then guide wire escalation was performed. Unlike the usual sequence where we start with a soft uh, polymer guide wire, in uh, uh, some cases the Pilot 200 which is a stiff polymer jacketed guide wire is used uh, up front. In this case, we did not use a tapered tip polymer jacketed wire like the Fielder XT or the Fighter because we thought a microchannel might be there and uh, by using a non-tapered, the risk of dissection of the microchannel might be less. And for, fortunately, there was um, a relatively easy crossing with the Fielder FC guide wire which seems to advance uh, along the course of the LAD 
which was of course confirmed with contralateral injection in two projections. So we do have successful crossing from true to true lumen into the LAD. We're obviously very happy for this uh, turn of events, given the need of potentially doing more CTOs during the same procedure. However, as it happens often when true to true crossing is achieved, we could not deliver a balloon through that uh, proximal LAD CTO. And in such cases, it's very important to have an algorithm on how to approach them. And this we have shown in previous cases, but essentially there is uh, different levels of aggressiveness that can be pursued. The first step is advancing a small balloon or a threaded microcatheter or a glider balloon or rupturing that balloon. And if, if it doesn't work, then we can try with various microcatheters together with techniques to increase the guide catheter support. The laser is a very helpful adjunct for these cases. If we can exchange the wire for a rota floppy wire, a therectomy can be useful as well. And the fourth and last line for such cases is to go subintimally to minimize um, um, the essentially the resistance of the tissue and uh, be able to recanalize the lesion. In this particular case, we tried initially a threader microcatheter that did not cross. However, then we performed grenadoplasty with a 1.5 millimeter balloon. And after that, we were able to advance the fine cross microcatheter through the occlusion all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We exchanged the filter FC wire for a workhorse Xeon Blue and then performed predilatation with uh, small balloons followed by standing with long uh, 38 millimeter drag eluting stents followed by more proximal drag eluting stent. There was some conversation about how far back we should take the stent and the consensus was to try to end it at the takeoff of the septal and the middle LAD so as to minimize the risk of compromising this large septal branch. Indeed, this was done. The LAD stents were postulated and then intravascular ultrasound afterwards showed some good stent expansion. There was a small area of dissection at the proximal edge of the LAD stent. However, uh, that was very, very small non flow limiting. And given the excellent geographic appearance, we do not want to perform any additional uh, standing. We do see that the distal LAD was very diffusely diseased. However, we also know that over time, the caliber of the vessel can increase by approximately 0.4 millimeters, but often as much as one or more millimeters. Therefore, no additional treatment was performed in, in the LAD. The discussion was whether additional attempts for revascularization should be performed. However, we had used a small amount of contrast at this time and no significant amount of radiation. And we already had the hemodynamic support device, the impeller device, as well as two guide catheters. Therefore, we elected to attempt recanalizing the right coronary artery, which seemed to supply a larger territory than the obtuse marginal CTO. Similar to the previous assessment, the cup of the, the proximal cup of the lesion was blunt. The length appeared to be long, approximately 70 millimeters, all the way from the mid right to the PDA PLB bifurcation. There was a bifurcation of the distal cup. However, the patient did have some nice septal collaterals from the LAD. Hence, the plan was to try undergrade crossing with wires first with um, a quick conversion to retrograde if the initial undergrade crossing attempts were unsuccessful. We did have um, um, difficulty with support. We finally exchanged uh, the um, guide catheter for um, an amplatz, but we were unable to engage the right coronary wall with an amplatz guide catheter. Therefore, we um, continued with the JR4, but we did use a six friends uh, guide liner. We then performed guide wire escalation using um, a pilot 200 and a Gaia second wire. However, the wire was stuck within the occlusion without much advancement. And given the excellent and multiple septal collaterals, we decided to attempt a retrograde crossing instead of persisting with undergrade crossing attempts. Indeed, crossing of the uh, septals was easy. Uh, essentially, the first attempt, uh, the Fielder FC guide wire through the fine cross catheter successfully crossed through um, to the PDA. As confirmed by injection, we're now at the distal cap. Then we were able to advance the fine cross microcatheter all the way 
to the distal cap and then to our pleasant surprise as well we were able to advance the retrograde guide wire essentially all the way to the occlusion and after removing the undergrade guide wire from the turnpike catheter we were then able to advance the retrograde guide wire which is still the same filter FC all the way into the undergrade turnpike LP microcatheter. Essentially this is a form of the rendezvous technique one could also call it a form of the tip-in technique in which the retrograde guide wire is advanced into the undergrade microcatheter. After doing that we were able to advance the guide wire all the way into the undergrade guide catheter. We then trapped the microcatheter uh, with a fine cross and exchange for an RG3 guide wire and long externalization guide wire which have made significant uh, uh, progress in making externalization easier and safer. Predilatation was performed which restored undergrade flow. There appeared to be some dissection distally so we were a little concerned about preserving the very large posterior lateral branch. That is why we attempted to wire into that branch using a twin pass microcatheter. However, we had a very hard time going in there. And given the relatively easy retrograde crossing, we assumed that we might have been still in true lumen in the distal vessel. And as a result, we placed uh, a drug eluting stand into the distal right coronary all the way in the PDA followed by another stand into the mid-right coronary artery which were post dilated and uh, were well expanded and well opposed on intravascular ultrasound and the good news are that although we jailed that PLV we did not lose the flow we had excellent flow both in the PDA into the PLV This was the last picture of the left system after removing the retrograde guide wire microcatheter. There was no perforation. The patient did remain hemodynamically stable throughout the procedure and the impella device was removed at the end of the procedure. A total of 197 minutes of, fluoro time, of procedure time was used. Fluoro time was 61 minutes, 1.9 gray and 320 ml of contrast. This case uh, highlights several important considerations for CTOPCI. The first one is that for patients with low ejection fraction in whom we are performing PCI through one of the last remaining vessels, hemodynamic support can help potentially make the procedure safer. The second is that true to true lumen crossing may be more likely to result in balloon uncrossable lesions. And for such lesions, it's important to have an algorithm for approaching them. In this particular case, Threader was not successful. However, the grenadoplasty was successful in allowing subsequent crossing of a microcatheter. The third uh, lesson from this case is that uh, when undergrade doesn't work and we have an excellent retrograde option, as in this case with multiple large septal collaterals, performing early conversion to the retrograde approach might actually be the preferred approach than trying for a long time into undergrade crossing attempts. Another interesting observation is the use of the rendezvous technique with advancing the retrograde guide wire into the undergrade microcatheter. This is not always feasible, of course, but when it happens, uh, it makes the procedure easier, allow us to advance the retrograde microcatheter all the way into the guide catheter, externalize and complete the procedure. And last but not least, this case highlights the importance of complete revascularization by recanalizing both LAD and the right coronary artery. Um, the patient's myocardial function has the best chance to recover. The plan is to potentially bring him back and attempt a PCI of the uh, obtuse marginal CTO at a second time. Thank you very much.